Hey, I'm Xavier Johnson with FYI with the special guest, Sean Geddes. Hey, Sean, how are you? Hey, Xavier, I'm fine. How are you? Great. Let's get into some headlines. First, let's talk about a cultural diversity event that was held here at Nash Community College in the Brown Auditorium on March 4th, 2017 from 11 to 4. This event was held in honor of our Cultural Diversity Month that was in February. On March the 8th, the Student Veterans Association hosted an event here at Nash Community College in order to showcase all the benefits available to veterans on campus, including educational opportunities, training opportunities, medical benefits, and retirement benefits. Speaking of associations, our own very own Student Government Association held two coffee hours this month of March. The first one was March 13th, 2017, and this was held in the library. Now, two days later, on Wednesday, March 15th, 2017, one was held in the Continuing Education Building. On March 16th, employers and job seekers met here on Nash Community College's campus in preparation for the Skills USA competition and the career fair. Attendees met local community leaders, had their resumes reviewed, and received tips on how to interview. On March 31st, the Shoot for the Gold Tournament held by our Nash Community College Scholarship Foundation as well as our very own Metal Workers Club. This event was held at the Rose Hill Plantation in Nashville, North Carolina, and the purpose of this event was to provide funds for student learning as well as student scholarships. Let's go to the moon. The moon is exactly 238,900 miles from planet Earth. Students and faculty here at Nash Community College have been challenged until April 29, 2017 to do exactly that many miles whether you can walk, run, or jog. You can even ride your bike. To log your miles so we can get to this enormous goal, you need to report all of your miles down to the Hawks Nest in the D building in room 4005. Let's talk Blue Fest. On Saturday, April the 29th, Nash Community College will host the second annual Blue Fest an event that is open to the public which celebrates everything that Nash Community College has to offer. Events include the third annual Run for Knowledge event, live music, craft beer sampling, Electric Line Academy Rodeo, drone demonstrations, and more. And speaking of events at Bluefest, don't miss the inaugural Disc Golf Scholarship Tournament. Register now at nashcc.edu slash bluefest. Player check-in is from 9 to 9.30 in the morning with the event starting at 10. As mentioned by Sean, the third annual Run for Knowledge event that is held during the early mornings of the Blue Fest, walkers and runners are also welcome on April 29th. And this is to help raise support for student learning as well as student scholarships here at Nash Community College. If you would like more information, visit www.nashcc.edu forward slash run. Nash Community College as well as future Nash Community College students, it is that time of year again where you sign up for your fall and summer courses. Registration will be held April 5th in the Brown Auditorium for new students here at Nash Community College. And for current students, Web Advisor will be open March 31st, 2017 at 12 p.m. For more information, visit nashcc.edu. And that'll do it for this month's headlines for FYI. I'm Xavier Johnson with Sean Guinness. Thank you for having me, Xavier. Thanks, Sean, for sitting in with me. Join Nash Community College Saturday, April 29th for the second annual Blue Fest. This day-long event includes the third annual Run for Knowledge, an inaugural disc golf tournament, and fun-filled events on Nash Community College's beautiful campus, including music, food, electric climb pole climb, craft beer and gourmet pizza sampling, hands-on activities, and more. See demonstrations of advanced manufacturing, beekeeping, first responders, culinary arts. Join us April 29th for a celebration of education and free family fun.
Hey, I'm Xavier Johnson with FYI, along with Sonia Small from Student Enrollment Services, and we'll be talking about the upcoming career fair that's coming up. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Um, let's get into some questions. Okay. What is the career, career fair for? Well, the career fair is the annual, what we used to call job fair. Um, it is for our students here at Nash Community College, for our alumni, and for people around the uh, community. All right, and with people coming around from the community, what are some companies, local companies that will be coming? Well, right now we have your local Zaxby's, Cummings, um, New Standard. Uh, we have various others from in employment agencies like your temporary express personnel, um, Kelly Services, various other entities. We have some um, police officers coming, um, some fire departments. It's a very big range of what's being offered um, this year. It's not just one particular standard of anything. So pretty much from anybody who has any type of background and or looking for a career can find something here at this job fair. All right, I know finding careers are very important because yes. with the job market this day is insane. Yes. Um, now, you were talking about career and jobs. Now, what's the difference between a career fair and a job fair? Well, pretty much the lingo is used um, from agency to agency, the same thing. Um, but more or less what Nash Community College decided is that we're not just trying to get a student for something temporary. We want them to have something long term that they're being embedded in. So basically, you know, when you come in, you're taking your certifications, you're taking your degree, and you're landing a career that will take you long term, something that you will work for for several years, something that you may be able to even retire from. So it's no longer you just doing something temporarily, like you're not just looking at it for a summer or a year, you're looking at this for a lifetime. What's going to change you lifetime going forward? With the upcoming job fair, what is some tips? What are some tips that you think is great for people who want to come out and try to find themselves a career? Well, the first thing I would definitely tell anybody who's actually coming to the career fair is, first of all, dress appropriately. Um, this is not your backyard barbecue. This is not your just uh, run-of-the-mill event. If you want to be taken seriously, you need to look seriously and look the part. And some jobs, no, not every job that you're going to go to is going to require you to wear a jacket and a tie or a skirt every day, but you do need to come presentable, basically meaning make sure your clothes are ironed, make sure that you, you know, have some dress slacks or a nice skirt or a, a nice shirt. It could be a polo shirt with some khakis. It just needs to be presentable looking. Um, we are going to offer our students a um, Dress for Success workshop on April 24th, which is the day before the actual career fair. And it's open to all students and all alumni. They could come and we can, we're can we going to dress them from head to toe of what they need, and it's free. The clothes are completely free. They walk out with whatever they have. Um, and then, of course, their resume. Um, not every employer is going to take a resume, but if you do have a portfolio with a resume in it, and if you also create yourself a portfolio of some things that you've done, put those into a portfolio. So basically you can go around and show people your examples of things that you've created and things you've done. And then of course, um, I always tell students have you know a, pa a paper and pencil with them just so they can write down some notes to take back. Um, especially following up names, something to put the cards they may get from employers with them so that they can always follow up with the employer and actually um, personally make a connection again, not just you know leaving your resume or just leaving your application, but you want to follow up with that employer. And that's such a great thing to do because within about one to two business days, you want to make sure that you follow up with those that you connect with during the career fair so that they don't forget you and forget why you came. Will this be an annual event? Will this be like a yearly event? What's going to what is going to be the future for this? Yes, the career fair is going to be a standard. It's already a, a standard event that we have, so we are looking at continuously utilizing um, the the month of April uh, to have a big career fair continuously. We're going to also continue with our employers of doing some mini. Um, job fairs in the fall where the employer if they want to come out and set up a table we'll kind of just have them do a little one-on-one -on -one thing but we're definitely going to this is going to definitely continue to be Nash's big um, annual event. And I feel like it's very it's going to be beneficial for the community it's going to be beneficial for students yes and thank you for talking with me today. Thank you. You're welcome.
Hey, sports fans, we'll remind you guys to tune in every Friday at 3.30 p.m. with Sports with Luke on WNIA Big Bang Radio. Sports with Luke, we'll be breaking down all professional sport events and all your local high school sport events going around the tri area. Don't forget, tune in every Friday at 3.30 p.m. And if we go into overtime, everybody's a winner with Sports with Luke. 3.30 p.m. WNIA Big Bang Radio. Ready, set, hurry! <laughs> Hi, I'm Isaac Anderson, host of Big Bang Cinema. Right, and I'm DJ Just Tyler. What are you doing? I got. We're doing, we got to do it together. Bro, I don't want you in this. It's not good. No, we, we need to be both in this. It's good no, for us to both look, be in it. I, I mean, I talk the most. I have the most final information. No, you always talk the most. You talk the most in front of everybody. Because you can't stop talking. Well, I want to do this one. Well, I, I need to, to do it with you. We need to do it both. What's that? What is what? Every uh, single Thursday from 4 to 5, where I am DJ Just Tyler over here, talk about movie news. It was news. nothing over there. It was nothing well, over there. Well, you are nothing, you know? I am something. We, to go, together, we are the show. Oh, look. No. It's, not, it's not Isaac's show. It's not, it's not DJ Just Tyler's show. It is... Uh, what is our show called? Um, yeah. See, see it, what I mean? You're uh, so uh, unprofessional at this. I am very professional. No, uh, all right. Do you want to do some way professional? Let's yeah. play rock, paper, scissors okay. for a promo. You ready? Ready. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh. Every Thursday from 4 to 5. Like, that was professional. That, that was, was professional. That was professional, okay? Look, I got to get you out of the shot somehow. I need to be in the shot. You don't need to be in the I shot. I have to be in the right? shot. You don't even need to be on the show. I need to be on the show. No, you don't. I want to come up with the show. Who are you? Not 89.1 Big Bang Radio. Big Bang, Big Bang, is that it? Big, Big Bang Radio. Big Bang. Big Bang Radio. Big Bang. You said Big Bang Radio. You can't even say it right. I said it right. It's you know what? Let, let me do it. Let me do it. Okay. You, you done? I'm done. You done with it? 89.1. Yeah, only on Big Bang Radio. <sighs> This month on FYI, I went over and got some footage and interviews with the cast and crew of The Blind Spirit, a production put on by our very own Nash Community College Drama Department in association with our Cosmetology and Culinary Arts Department. Let's take a look at some of this footage now. Hey, I'm Xavier Johnson from FYI. I'm here with one of the characters from the play. Hey, Caribbean, how are you? I'm good. My name is Sarah Carmody and I'm playing Elvira. I play Madame Arcati and she's a old medium who conjures up spirits and such. What's your character in The Black Spirit? Uh, what character? My name is Charles. What is her character all about? She is Charles' first wife who has sadly passed away, but with the control of Madame Arcadi, she's brought back to life. She's a very fun and bubbly character who is kind of like, she's very comedic like y'all. <laughs> it's really hard to just keep myself calm and collected while playing her because there's so many funny parts and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm a horrible, terrible person. Characterization was a big thing because I've never played a character quite like this before. And also the British accents, that was, uh, it took a lot of time and error trial and error to do. The British accent, oh, the British accent. Because I never did a British accent before and that was really difficult for me, but now that I know, it's better now. Can you try out your British accent here? No. I'm a horrible, terrible person. With the Blight Spirit, what is y'all particular role that y'all play? Well, I am the backstage manager of the play, so I am one of the people that make sure that the props are where they're supposed to be and the actors have um, the costumes that they need and the props that they need when the play is started. So you're very important? I would say so. <laughs> I am the props master and the costume master. So basically, I help compile all the costumes and I make sure that we have all the props we need and I'm also working as a stagehand during the show. I'm a horrible, terrible person. Why did you choose The Black Spirit as a play that y'all wanted to put on? Oh, that's a great question. And the truth is, this is one of my all-time favorites. Going way, way back to a time I can barely remember. And when I was in high school, it's the first time I was introduced to it and I actually was in it. And I don't know if that's the reason I picked it. I'm trying to rekindle the good old days. I remember seeing it professionally uh, in Stratford at a, when I was still in high school. And then in 2009, Angela Lansbury played Madame Arcati on Broadway. And I caught a glimpse of her coming out of the theater and it was so exciting. 
It is a wonderful comedy. It's timeless. It is just witty and fun, and I'm very excited because it's always been on my um, list to do. What is something that you would like to say to the people that are coming to see the play? Oh, well, um, well, I do hope they have a good time, and I hope they aren't expecting a happy ending for anyone except me. And playing this character, what is something you're going to take from her? I'm going to take the experience of having a big role like this and use it for my further career as an actress. Always, always be in high spirits. Always look at everything on the bright side, as she says. And just, even though things are looking like they're going to fall and crumble, just always have that spirit like, ah, oh, it'll be all right. I would love for the audience to, at any theatrical presentation, be transported to somewhere else, to be able to truly forget their troubles and be so immersed in this farcical comedy that they laugh their heads off. If they can enjoy themselves and laugh and find that moment, I will be so happy. Hi, I'm Xavier Johnson with FYI, along with Amanda Stanford, instructor here at Nash Community College, as well as an archeologist. Hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Great, let's jump into some questions. All right. How long have you been in your field of study? I've been studying archaeology now for eight years. I switched to degrees in anthropology and public history when I was a sophomore at East Carolina University and graduated from there in December of 2009 with a BA in anthropology and a BS in public history. And then I went straight into the master's program there in anthropology and focused on historical archaeology. I graduated from there in 2012 and then I became a full-time archaeologist right after that. Now, you're an online instructor here at Nash Community College. Mm -hmm. How did you get to do that as well as what are some topics that you choose for your classes? Well, I'm teaching right now American History 1, Ameri um, History 131, and Humanities 110, which is Society and Technology. Um, in American History 1, we cover uh, Native Americans all the way through Civil War and Reconstruction. And in Society and Technology, we're looking at the interaction between society and technology, how society leads to the need for certain technologies and how, in turn, technology influences society. As an online instructor, what do you expect your students to learn from you since you have all this experience? Well, what I try to bring um, to the classroom is the fact that what I'm teaching is relevant in the real world to a lot of jobs. And so often in history classes, you know, we're just told, well, it's important to know the history of your country or it's important to know history so you don't repeat its mistakes and um, <laughs> those kind of cliche answers. But in reality, um, a lot of jobs require you to do some sort of historical research or at least research. And the skills that you should learn in a history class um, should prepare you for that. Um, in my job in particular, um, when we're preparing to go out in the field, we have to do this historical research so that we know what kind of events have taken place in our project areas. Um, and there are other jobs where you have to know the history um, behind what you're doing. And even if it's not historical research, if you're just um, reading research papers, um, the skills that you should get in history class should prepare you to notice inherent biases in these documents and to think about who's writing it and what their purpose is. And so I try to bring that to my history class. Um, for our discussion forums, we're always looking at a primary source that um, was written or created or painted during the time period that we're studying. And I try and get them to think about who's the author, who's the audience, um, what kind of biases might be in this document, and what can it show a historian or a person in general about the time period. And um, in society and technology, um, I think what I bring to that is an archaeological perspective because archaeology is the study of the human past through its material remains, but these remains were created using technology from the time period. So from stone tools all the way through the Industrial Revolution, we're seeing artifacts from this. And so I try to sort of bring an archaeological perspective to it, and I think that's useful. Yeah. I was, I was always told that English and history are always the things that you will always need, whatever, <laughs> wherever you go. Um, what are some things that you use that are different from face-to-face -face classes? Well, online is definitely different. Um, we don't meet weekly in person, but um, I send out weekly emails to them to remind them about their assignments and to tell them what we're going to be learning about that week. Um, they have the option of signing up for weekly text messages from me um, to remind them through remind.com. Um, and we even are able to do um, online group projects now through Google Slides, which I think is really neat. So I think 
the neat thing about National Online is we're trying really hard to make the experience at least as engaging as in-person class, if not more. All right. And in your own opinion, what are some of the greatest archaeologists discoveries here recently? Well, I'd, I'd say my favorite thing that I found is a 19th century pocket comb. It was actually um, on the Civil War site in Fort Macon on the coast of North Carolina. Um, as archaeologists, we find a lot of mundane things. Um, in the historical realm, we find ceramics and nails and glass and brick. Um, and it's not often you find something as personal as a pocket comb. Um, and then in the Native American side, you know, we find what people call arrowheads, we call projectile points. Um, we find flakes, they're evidence of making stone tools. Um, so yeah, this pocket comb for me was pretty special because it was just the idea that the last time it was seen, you know, it was coming out of probably a Civil War soldier's pocket. So yeah, I'd say that that was my favorite thing that I found. And you said you've traveled a lot in your recent years as an archaeologist. What are some of the places that you visit? Oh, um, I've done archaeological work in West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, and South Carolina and Georgia. What is one of your favorite archaeologist expeditions that you've been on so far? I'm going to answer that in two parts because okay. there's my favorite adventure archaeologically and then there's my favorite archaeology based project. <laughs> um, the biggest adventure and the most memorable project was in the mountains of Tennessee. I did this project right out of grad school. It was my first uh, full time getting paid as an archaeology person for real. Um, and I spent two months there and my very first day we were hiking through the mountains and it was time to go home and our crew chief was trying to get us out of the mountains back to the road and the thing about the mountains is you can't just look at a map and go straight um, <laughs> or you end up doing some crazy things which is kind of what I think happened this particular day. We were cutting across the side of a mountain carrying our equipment which is a backpack, shovel, screen that we use to screen the dirt to find the artifacts and trying not to slide down this mountain and we're all kind of just following each other trying to get out and I can hear the people in front of me and they're continuously cursing so I know it's not getting any better and um, I just at one point I slip and I reach out and I grab anything that I can and luckily I caught a giant fuzzy poison ivy vine and it saved me so I was very thankful but I got poison ivy all over my arms and it was just it was a really rough first day for a first project and I just knew that when I got out, I just needed them to say to me that this was a rough day. <laughs> that every day was not going to be like this. And that's what they said. They're like, oh, this was a tough day to start out with. And I was like, okay, I can do this. And so I saw the project through and um, it, was, it was really rewarding. Um, so that was definitely my biggest adventure project. Um, but archaeologically, my favorite one would be the Fort Macon field school that I was on. Um, it was on the coast of North Carolina, like I said before and we got to stay in the state park so we were pretty much staying right on the beach and we'd go and we'd dig in the sand all day and then we'd come back and we'd go lay on the sand and and get in the water and um it was just it was really neat it was a civil war site we were looking for the admiral's house and found it and we found a cannonball and we had to have people come out and make sure it wasn't going to explode on us and um we found a lot of civil war bullets and um just all sorts of things in the pocket comb like i said before so yeah, I'd say that those two are the ones that stand out the most in my career. All right. They say if you have fun with what you're doing, you never work a day in your life. That's right. Are there anything that you would like to mention that you like or anything useful to our students and faculty that watch? Um, yeah, I'd like to say if there's any students out there that are interested in studying archaeology or anthropology, um, let me know. I'd be glad to talk to you about it. And also, I'll be teaching my Humanities 110 course and American History 2 this summer. So <laughs> come on out and sign up. And for students that are interested in taking these courses and learning more about what you do and about this area of study, is there a specific degree that they would need? No, um, they're both general education courses, so anyone's welcome. All right. Thank you for sitting with me today. I'm Xavier Johnson with FYI, along with Amanda Stanford, and have a nice day. Did you know Nash Community College offers 12 degree programs entirely online? Are you interested in information technology? Explore information technology systems, network management, system security, healthcare informatics or web design and administration. These two year programs are only a few of the online associate degrees offered through Nash Online. Students receive the same quality instruction and resources as on campus students without ever stepping foot on Nash's campus. Learn more about Nash Online today at online.nashcc.edu. Hello, my name is Stuart Hawkins, 
And did you know that March is Problem Gambling Awareness Month? Well, to talk to us about problem gambling in college is Sarah and Itima. Ladies, what can you tell us about problem gambling in colleges today? 75% of college students report gambling in the past year. This includes buying lottery tickets, online gaming, playing cards, and betting on sports. That's right. And research shows that college students are more impulsive and at a higher rate for developing gambling disorders. Students who gamble compared to those who don't have higher rates of smoking, drinking, and drug use. Those with gambling problems even have lower GPAs. Plus, students with gambling problems are at a higher risk for developing mood and anxiety disorders. So if you or someone you know has a problem with gambling, ladies, what should they do? You can come by the Student Wellness Center for help or call the Problem Gambling Hotline at 1-877-718-5543. Or visit morethanagamenc.org to find out more about gambling problems. This will conclude this month's episode of FYI. Make sure to tune in next month for more great news. Let's get into some headlines. First, we're talking about a cultural diversity event that was here here at Nash Community College in the Brown Auditorium. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into some headlines. First, there was a cultural diversity event held here at Nash Community. <laughs> Let's go to the moon. Nash, eh, no. Nah. As mentioned by Sean, the third annual Run for Knowledge is a 5K run to help support student learning as well as student scholarships here at Nash Community College. This event will be held April 29th during the flu bet, the, the flu bet, the flu bet. <laughs> this will be held on April 29th during the festivities of the Blue Fest. <laughs> as mentioned by Sean, I can't. <laughs> as mentioned. <laughs> Hello, Xavier. <laughs> I've come here to do the headlines with you. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll do it for this month's headlines for FYI. I'm Xavier Johnson. And I'm Sean Geddes. They've got me chained to this chair. <laughs>